photography. The work is causing some controversy because it seems not everything was heavenly in the world of Star Trek. Mr. Shatner joins us now. You know, I'm reading over your book, and most actors don't, we're not as candid as you are. They go, oh, I love everybody loved everybody on the set. It was all fun. And then and behind the scenes, they're stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. But a show like Star Trek, so enormous, elevated you into stardom, obviously. You were an actor before, a star afterward. People change on the set, don't they? Isn't there well, rivalry? they do. They do. And it is, there is rivalry. But there's not much an actor can do about getting a role. The agents can parlay and they make things happen or producers get the favorites in. And, but the actor themselves, Themselves, very difficult to to do something about anything other than trying to perform. But millions of people watching Star Trek and they still watch it. It's a phenomenon. And Roddenberry creates it, and then you get hired, and uh, Nimoy gets hired, and everybody looks at the show as number one, uh, a very professional presentation, very enjoyable. But they don't think about behind the scenes. And then you write that there was some tension between you and Nimoy. There was, and uh, to begin with, uh, uh, publicity, probably jealousy on my part. Your part? He got a lot of publicity as uh, as Spock, and I, if I remember correctly, I thought maybe I should get some of it. But you were the leading man. You were the big guy. I was a young actor and and intent on uh, on uh, my character. So you territory. were jealous of him? Yeah, were I you think mean so. to him? I don't think so. And in the end, what I'm trying to put uh, into perspective is this feud. Uh, Leonard and I didn't uh, have much of a feud to begin with, and now we're, we're bosom friends, we're brothers. But what happened as, I, uh, as the show went on, uh, and then I began to do interviews on books that I was writing, one of the actors said to me six or seven years after the show was over, uh, uh, would you like to hear how we despised you? And that came as a shock. I said, what are you talking about? And uh, Nichelle Nichols began to describe how much they disliked me because, and then I never really got a good reason. And it's 40 years later. Did I that thought, hurt your feelings? Yeah, I was astounded. Uh, so when they said, look, we really didn't like you when we were back then, but they wouldn't say anything because, you know, you were the big guy and they'd get in trouble. Something like that. You know, I mean, but that's really, that's not unusual in show business or television business. I mean, when, when big guys make it and the other guys who don't make it, you know, he's a rotten guy, da, 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 da. You know how it is, human nature. In uh, New York, I'm on a Broadway show, big uh, hit Broadway show, and an actor is... Um, is uh, uh, clapping me on the shoulder when he gets a laugh, and it's a nice gentle hit when he gets a laugh. When his laugh doesn't hit, when he missed time. you a little it, harder, huh? It'd be a little harder. Yeah. So one day I said, you gotta stop. He said, no, and I went to everybody, it took weeks, I went yeah. up the ladder, no. And finally I said, if you hit me like that again, I'm gonna hit you back. Good. So he hit me. Mm -hmm. And so I hauled off and punched him. What play was that? Uh, the World of Susie Wong. Oh. And he hit it, it, it wasn't any violence in Susie Wong, as I remember. Right? Uh, well, no, it was all... <laughs> <laughs> so it was hard to fake that. It was hard to fake it. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. I don't know. Some, Susie you know. in a brawl? Yeah. <laughs> what happened here? So right, I, that, I hit this actor back. And well, he, good for you. Yeah. I would have done it much earlier. Um, as we know. Yeah, as we know, absolutely. <laughs> um, Boston Legal. You got big time Candace Bergen, Spader, serious actors, you, this and the other thing. Here again, there must be some rivalry and tension on the set because you're all, you're all artists. Right. You're all but you know we're not. It's, it's astonishing. These are professional, mature. Ah, mature. Actors. How do you get that? I really, I have to f find you gotta out work how to get that. You got to work on yourself. Yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then you lose your charm, you see. <laughs> That's what I say, you know. This really. book, this book right. is a... Uh, uh, a panoply of my life. The incidents we're talking about are part of the book sure. up till now. And, and the overall message of the book is? Is decisions you make at all times should be done consciously because they reverberate the rest of your life. Yeah, don't get drunk out of your mind and do some crazy thing. Well, those are big. Like what about uh, moving the papers, saying hello to somebody, anything. Just be aware of your life. And that's, that's good. Them. That's that's a good message because the unintended consequences of slights and everything there else. There you come go. Back to bite you. Let alone the, time. the big t big ones of who you should have gone left when you should have gone, gone right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. And the choice of companions is huge and all that's that. That's what I mean. All right, I'm going to finish it up. I didn't have time to read the whole thing. The book is up till now. William Shatner. Thanks for coming in here. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right.